In this lecture on uh, dry edge, we are going to look at uh, plasma characteristics. So, in the earlier lecture, uh, we discussed about the nature of the plasma, right? What are all the constituents of plasma, and how we generate plasma, and how to sustain the plasma. In this uh, lecture, we are going to uh, look at uh, the configuration uh, that we normally use, right? How do we supply energy to the plasma? Right. And then also look at uh, how we use this plasma for etching, right? why we actually are uh, interested uh, in using plasma process as opposed to you know wet chemical process to define patterns. So, uh, let us look at why uh, we need plasma etching. First of all, uh, plasma etching could be done uh, or can be made anisotropic, right? What is anisotropic? Isotropic, we know, uh, it's it's an equal edge in all the direction, right? So both uh, horizontal and then the vertical edge is is going to have the same rate, right? The edge rate in vertical will be equal to edge rate in horizontal direction. So uh, if you take a a material that is covered with photoresist and then if you expose it to any wet chemical which normally does uh, any general wet chemical you will get uh, a profile like this. The reason for that is uh, the vertical edge rate is equal to the horizontal edge rate. So, you would not be able to get very smooth or very uh, sharp side walls. Right. So, in order to achieve um, uh, sharp side walls you need what is called anisotropic that is directional edge. Right. So, where your uh, vertical edge will be much much larger than your horizontal edge rate. So, this is what you would uh, like to achieve and this, this is achievable in a plasma edge process. right? And the next thing is the consumption of chemicals uh, uh, can be controlled. Uh, because you are using a chamber, uh, we can control the chemical consumption and that will directly result in cost reduction and also uh, a controlled uh, disposal of all these chemicals could be done. So, some of the chemicals are, are uh, uh, toxic, so we do not have to expose it uh, to um, uh, human beings, right? So, we will contain it in the chamber so that we can dispose it. Uh, clearly. And uh, it is a clean process because it happens inside the vacuum. So, we can be assured about the contamination that you get and we can also automate the whole process. right? So, we can uh, employ this in manufacturing as well. And the other thing as I mentioned uh, when you can make an isotropic pattern, the pattern can uh, have a very precise uh, transfer as well. So, this is what the isotropic and anisotropic as, uh, as I, we explained uh, in the last uh, slide. right? So, you have a mask and you have uh, uh, silicon in this case and we want to etch the material. right? In uh, isotropic, you will see uh, etch in the lateral direction as well. Okay? So, this is, uh, this is the result of equal etch in vertical and horizontal direction. But then if you look at anisotropic that is directional, uh, you normally refer to this sort of pattern where you do not have any lateral edge, you have edge only in the vertical direction. However, if you choose uh, some of this chemical for instance KOH, right? Uh, potassium hydroxide actually this one uh, this chemical H is silicon uh, in a directional uh, way that means based on the crystal orientation you will see there is a directional edge. In this case we cannot ca call this as isotropic it is still anisotropic right it is directional edge. In some crystal planes the edge rate is higher and some uh, you will have very low edge rate. So, that is also directional right. So, when you talk about anisotropic we have to be very clear about the process I is it directional or is it vertical edge right. So, directional need not be vertical only right. So, when you are uh, talking about this uh, an anisotropic edge you should also consider um, whether it is directional or whether it is vertical uh, distance that you are uh, talking about. Uh, the other thing is um, isotropic uh, nature or direction. How do we actually um, find out 
if it is isotropic or directional. The only way to do that is when you are doing the process development, uh, you should keep the photoresist here. So, this is your uh, photoresist and then you have done the process, right? And then when you are doing the process, do not remove the photoresist, keep the photoresist and then look at the cross section, right? So, you can uh, uh, make a pattern, right? And then you cut this pattern, right? And cut the pattern and then look at the cross section. And when you look at the cross section, you will know that there is an undercut here. If you remove the photoresist, you will end up with a pattern like this, for instance, if you have overage. And in this case, you do not know whether this is isotropic or whether uh, you have done a directional edge, right? Which we saw in the earlier slide that directional also is anisotropic, right? So, you need to be careful about this. So, when you are doing process development, keep the mask, right? Always keep the mask so that you know whether it is uh, a directional edge or isotropic. So, any kind of misinterpretation could uh, of course, lead to wrong conclusion. So, when you are doing process development, make sure that you, t uh, you uh, extract maximum information from the experiments uh, that you do. So, when you keep the photoresist here, you will know that uh, it is not uh, directional edge, it is a undercut. And the next thing is about uh, directionality again uh, on a topography wafer. So, what is a topography is nothing but you know a surface with corrugation which is a non planar right. When you have features and when it is uh, etched and so on we call that as a topography. So, now you have a topography right and then I filled with some material let us say this is silicon nitride right. So, I fill this material and then if I take this material for dry etching right. So, we go for dry edge right? and there are two things that can happen. One is highly directional edge, one is isotropic edge. If I do isotropic edge on this filled uh, uh, wafer, uh, I will remove all the nitride that is present in both uh, vertical and uh, you know lateral because I am doing isotropic edge. So, I will remove the material here. right? I will not find any nitride at all. But then if it is highly directional, that means I am etching only in one direction, right? If that is the case, then my lateral edge is uh, almost zero, right? In this case, uh, ideal case. Uh, so I will see this side walls, right? So I can fill or coat these side walls by using a highly directional edge, and this is uh, the process used uh, in spacer definition. Right. In optical lithography for multiple patterning, we had this spacer defined multiple uh, multi layer patterning. Right. So, uh, we use uh, this kind of uh, directional edge to define these spacers. Okay. So, the reason for that is it is a uniform thickness. Right. So, when the edge is happening, right, let us all over the place, and uh, this is the thickness I have here, but in this case, it is. T plus capital T, let us say, right. So, while I remove this thickness here, the remaining thickness is, is left, right, on the side wall. So, this is how you end up with a side wall coated uh, film. And these are all the methods that we use, right. So, dry edge uh, can be done using various uh, uh, methods and uh, broadly classified under glow discharge method and iron beam uh, methods, right. In glow discharge, uh, you can use a plasma etching, right, uh, which is low energy, right, L E means low energy and it can be reactive iron etching and then it can be uh, glow discharge sputtering, right, uh, which is also high energy. So, in uh, case of plasma etching and reactive ion etching, we are going to use reactive gases, right, in both the cases. But if you look at uh, sputtering, you use inert, inert gas, right. So, similar to a PVD, right, a physical vapor deposition that uses um, sputtering process, uh, here again we use an inert gas and then accelerate those molecules onto the substrate to sputter the material away. There is no chemical reaction, but in uh, the above two cases, you have some chemical reaction uh, to convert solid to gas. And the next uh, method is ion beam, right. So, here uh, instead of having a discharge, we are using ion beams, right. So, you make a inert gas ion beam, right, and uh, you focus that ion beam and then uh, uh, directed towards the substrate. So, when you do that, you also 
get material removal. So, here again uh, no reactive uh, neutrals right. So, there is no uh, reaction happening. It is going to be again a physical process. It is going to uh, kick out the material by pure force right. So, there is no uh, chemical reaction involved. The other thing is chemically assisted ion beam etching. So, here in addition to the ion beam we are going to have add some reactive um, neutrals. So, that means you have both uh, ions and also some reactive species. So, later on we will see how uh, the, these processes are really fundamental, but in this case both physical and also chemical edge happens right. So, physical edge meaning only force is used to remove the material, chemical edge meaning you create chemical reaction and those products are uh, made volatile. And reactive uh, ion beam etching right. So, reactive ion we know. So, we create this uh, reactive ions and then direct those beams right. So, th that is again uh, another uh, way of doing etch instead of uh, creating uh, inert gas ions here the ions are reactive right? they can react and then you also create uh, reactive uh, neutrals add to this to do the etching ok. These are all the broad classification of dry etching methods. And then if we look at the uh, the etching parameters, the plasma parameters, there are there are huge lists, right. So, this is a selection of that uh, list. So, on the right side you see a very simple parallel plate reactor. So, why we call this as a parallel plate? It's, it looks like a capacitor you can see here there are two electrodes and uh, uh, in between you have a gap and uh, within this gap you create the plasma, right. And then you will see this dark space. Uh, on, on, on the top electrode and the bottom electrode which we will see uh, shortly why those things are uh, coming in. But then uh, there are two type of uh, plasma parameters. One uh, is the excitation frequency we are going to feed some energy right. So, that energy frequency right it can be you know DC also uh, and it can be RF. So, what is that right and then the power that we give right how much power we are going to give and then the gas flow rates because the plasma can be only generated when you have sufficient number of molecules in right. So, what kind of uh, gases we are putting in and what is the flow rate the nature of the dis discharge itself right with the, chi the, the, the chemical and uh, the electronic property of this gas is also important. The geometrical factor right the size of uh, the, uh, the electrodes right. Uh, between uh, the the power electrode and also the ground electrode and the wall that we have all those things really matter. And then the pumping speed right the pumping speed uh, also determines your pressure and so on. You can also say the, the gas flow and pumping speed uh, uh, you know together contribute to the pressure inside that. So, that is again an important parameter. So, this is the bulk uh, uh, plasma property right. Uh, how do we control that? So, next plasma to surface right. So, plasma surface interactions are very important because our we are going to keep our wafer uh, somewhere here right. So, when you keep the wafer here it is not bulk interaction the plasma should interact with the surface right. So, that depends on nature of the surface if the surface is conducting or whether the surface is insulating uh, and then the, uh, then the surface geometry itself right whether it is very small piece very large wafer. So, all those things matter temperature right what is the surface temperature because uh, surface reactions uh, are, 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 are affected by uh, the temperature as well right. So, whether uh, the temperature is uh, kept constant or it is done at uh, lower temperature or higher temperature. So, that affects the reaction on the surface. The last thing is about the potential because we generate all the uh, interesting radicals um, in the plasma. So, you have ions, uh, neutrals and electrons there. So, when you have a surface so what is the potential of the surface? So, based on the potential of the surface you can either attract or repel the species right. So, based on the surface potential your plasma surface uh, interaction will be affected. So, let us look at uh, some of these discharges right both on the uh, bulk side and also on the surface side. So, it will create lot of electrons of course, in this case we are uh, taking a simple CH4 uh, methane uh, uh, plasma. So, you will uh, generate positive ions, you will generate atoms and radicals right. So, you have uh, a huge 
combination, right? CHX uh, is a combo, so you can have a various, uh, you know, composition one can get, right? So, you are dissociating uh, the precursor gas. And the next thing is uh, you, have, you can have electronegative ions, you can have neutral molecules and also uh, uh, excited states as well. So, uh, as the molecule becomes complex, you will also get all possible uh, constituents in the plasma, right? So, which makes the plasma very rich at the same time very complex to study as well. So, let us look at another uh, uh, type of gas. Here, we are taking um, oxygen, very simple, right? So, in the previous part, it was CH4. In this case, just O2, right? So, here already you can see the combinations are limited, right? So, this also gives you a better understanding of uh, how, uh, you know, you can study the discharge, right? And also in terms of controlling the chemistry, if the material, uh, the molecule is very complex, it will have multiple dissociation uh, uh, components which will be very hard to actually uh, control and so on. But in this case, if you are working with oxygen, it is pretty uh, straightforward. And the next thing is argon. Argon is very simple because it is an inert uh, gas, right? So, what you do is you only create uh, positive ions and, uh, and electrons or, you know, uh, neutral argon uh, atoms as well. So, uh, that is the only possible constituents that you can generate using argon. So, the, the idea here is um, when, when the gas is very simple, it is easy to understand uh, their plasma phases, but then when the gas becomes more complex, then uh, the chemistry also becomes very interesting. And in some of the cases, you want to make this chemistry a little bit complex, so that you, you have, uh, you know, handle on which paths to control and you will have uh, a possibility of controlling different type of species. And this is the uh, relative density of different species, right, that you have in both low density discharge and high density discharge. So, uh, you will have H gases, right, and then we will have H products. Uh, radicals and then the charge pa charged particles. So, you, you can clearly see the charged particles, right? Uh, uh, that the, the, the amount of charged particles in a, in a low density plasma is pretty low, right? While uh, you, when you get the uh, radicals, they are pretty uh, high. However, in a high density plasma, uh, all the uh, compositions are pretty high, right? So, your H gases, radicals, uh, H products and also charged particles, all these constituents um, uh, number counts are high, right? So, if you look at uh, both uh, the cases low density or high density, you will naturally gravitate towards high density because you have efficient conversion of your H gases to radicals and charged particles, right? So, that is what you want. But in a low density plasma, your charged particle numbers are small because charged particles again also include electrons, right? So, that becomes very essential uh, to uh, create uh, dissociation and then also participate in uh, plasma sustenance, okay? So, high density and low density based on the requirement uh, of, uh, of the process one can choose and this, this should give you a, an idea, you know, uh, what is the number count uh, of these various uh, particles. And in plasma, as I mentioned uh, earlier, even in the last lecture, electrons are uh, the most important uh, particles, right? So, electron mobility inside uh, the plasma is, is, is uh, one of the important uh, activity uh, that uh, keeps the or sustains the plasma. So, electrons uh, that are mobile in, in the plasma, right, uh, much more than the, the ions. The reason for this is uh, very simple, it is the mass, right? So, electrons are uh, very low mass, so you can easily respond to the potential difference, right? And uh, the, because of this, um, you know, mobility of both electrons and positive ions in the plasma, you will have various, uh, you know, potentials developed. So, let us uh, look uh, at these things one by one. Uh, we call floating potential, plasma potential and self bias voltage. So, these are all the potential that is developed because of this um, nature of uh, electron and uh, ion mobility. So, first thing is uh, plasma potential. So, what is plasma potential? So, uh, the plasma potential is measured by using uh, an insulating surface, right? 
So, this is a highly insulating surface and then we insert this uh, uh, insulating surface inside the plasma. Okay. So, let us assume I have um, created a plasma in this zone. right? So, this is connected to uh, some source and then this is um, grounded and this is going to be our plasma. So, what is the floating portion potential? Floating potential is nothing but uh, you know uh, I put a, a, a glass here let us say. So, I, I take a, a an insulating um, layer here. So, if I uh, take this insulating layer and insert it into the plasma and now I am monitoring what is the current that is developed in this uh, sheet. right? So, what will happen when I insert? The first thing that will happen is a large number of electrons are going to come and uh, hit the surface. right? So, when this large number of electrons are going to hit the surface, you will create a, a negatively charged layer because there it is not grounded. It is very important to note this uh, uh, the insertion that we do uh, is not grounded. right? So, all the electrons will be accumulated and you will have a negative charge and once you generate this negative charge in this uh, insulator, you are going to attract positive ions. right? So, now, you are going to start to see ion current. Initially, you only had electron current, right? So, you slowly develop the electron uh, current there, but then once you reach a certain voltage, uh, the negative voltage, you are starting to attract ions, right? So, now ions are coming in. So, now these ions are also going to you know contribute or neutralize this and contribute to the uh, potential there. So, at some point, uh, both these uh, electron current and ion current will sort of uh, neutralize each other and that is what we call floating potential. Okay? And the next is a plasma potential. Right? This is similar to what we saw uh, earlier, but the only difference is um, we are going to ground. Right? So, what is the uh, uh, potential? Right? inside the plasma when you ground it. Right? So, this is what we are interested in. So, um, when there is a, a grounded chamber. right? So, inside a grounded chamber we are trying to look at and the same thing uh, would happen here as well. right? So, once you insert it, so you will have uh, electrons coming in and then you will also uh, see after a certain um, uh, accumulation of electrons, you will also see ion current. right? So, both of th these uh, currents will neutralize each other trying to uh, arrive at a certain potential which is called uh, the plasma potential. And uh, the other thing, uh, uh, important thing here is uh, the uh, the direction of your or the polarity of your voltage here, right? So here you see this is positive, right? While uh, the floating potential that we saw that is negative, right? The reason for that is the electron current, right? So you start with very large electron current, and in this case it is grounded as well, right? So that is the reason why your uh, plasma potential will be always be slightly positive. right? And uh, the other uh, thing to note here is uh, the electrons um, uh, that are uh, you know inside this plasma would always you know uh, scatter and then can reach the, the wall right? and this wall will also uh, ground it. Right? So, you can this is called uh, electron loss from the uh, from the uh, plasma right? and this electron loss uh, will make this uh, plasma slightly positive. If you remember um, plasmas are neutral, right? in principle plasma should be neutral, but because you have a grounded um, uh, cover here, uh, you will have some electron loss right? and this electron loss will make the plasma slightly positive. Why only electron loss? Why not uh, ion uh, loss? The reason for that is uh, the mobility of electrons. right? The, the electrons are much faster and also they scatter a lot. The scattering is the one that makes this electron go and uh, um, annihilate itself uh, in the chamber walls. Okay? And this is uh, all about plasma potential. right? So, there are two ways to look at it. Uh, either you put the, the layer inside or whatever you measure 
from the chamber wall itself right the potential uh, between uh, the the plasma and also chamber wall uh, is also your uh, plasma potential because the chamber walls are also you know grounded so let's look at uh, whether uh, you know uh, the energy that we give to the system uh, the nature of that energy that we give has an effect on the uh, plasma or not right so let's look at two cases one is uh, dc uh, glow discharge the other one is rf let's first look at dc uh, uh, discharge right so we take a parallel plate right uh, it's a capacitive uh, reactor we take a parallel plate and then i'm giving a a dc it's a dc source vc right and one plate is energized this is called the cathode plate and then this is the anode plate which is grounded right so um, when the when you apply uh, a negative voltage to uh, the cathode right so in the in this plate uh, you are going to attract some positive ions right so initially you will not have anything okay to start with so this is when you are switching on your uh, the system right so you will not have anything but you will have some charged particles anyway right and these charged particles will be accelerated let's assume this is a positive charge this will be attracted to the surface right with uh, with uh, a certain acceleration because you are applying a voltage here right when it hits the surface you 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 expect some electrons to come out right so this is the ejection of electrons when the elect electrons uh, come out it will be repelled by the cathode and accelerate towards anode right and during its motion uh, towards um, anode it is going to you know encounter other um, molecules and it will collide with those molecules okay so on this collision is what creates uh, dissociation ionization and also additional electrons right so so uh, in order to you know make this happen you need uh, both uh, electrodes to be conducting right that is again an important uh, property so let's look at the energy of this ions and electrons so a positive ion right that is uh, accelerated towards uh, the cathode will have uh, the energy equivalent to uh, e times vp plus vc vp is nothing but plasma potential okay and vc is the uh, the drive uh, potential that we apply okay so this is the accelerating voltage you can apply and you can vary this based on uh, your applied voltage right and then if you look at the voltage or potential across uh, the the two plates you will have negative uh, potential that we apply right so that is what we apply as a dc but as you move inside the plasma it will become slightly positive right so this is the positive side and this is the negative side right so you your po plasma potential is slightly positive so we already saw the plasma potential is slightly positive because of the electron loss that you have right the electrons are going to scatter a, lo a lot uh, unlike uh, ions and you will have uh, electron loss creating slightly positive potential but then uh, once it reaches uh, the other plate it will go to zero right and you can see here there are zero crossings right so you see the zero crossings here and here which will uh, which are interesting points right uh, later on we will see how this affects uh, the way uh, the glow discharge actually looks right and next is the rf uh, glow right um, instead of uh, uh, dc we replace it with rf source but you have to note it's not just rf but we put a, a blocking capacitor right so this is a blocking capacitor so this blocking capacitor is between the power electrode and rf and the other electrode of course is grounded okay so now we ca we call this as a power electrode and this is ground electrode okay so now uh, when i do when i pump uh, rf power through this uh, uh, blocking capacitor um, i can pu push energy into it uh, and then in, in in the same explanation holds true here as well but one interesting thing that you should uh, note is the the potential here right initially we had v uh, vc right so whatever 
supply voltage we had uh, that was the potential you had on the uh, in a, uh, power plate right but now it is vdc it's not vrf right so if this is vrf right it's not it's not going to be vrf it's going to be vdc so this vdc is nothing but your capacitor right whatever the capacitor could hold right so the vdc is nothing but the self bias voltage right how much charge the blocking capacitor can hold and that becomes the vdc okay and then uh, uh, the 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 plasma potential that we get uh, in uh, uh, rf glow discharge is much larger than dc the reason for this is efficient power transfer right so we'll see why it is efficient in the next slide but the plasma uh, potential is very high it which is important so that your plasma is very uh, uh, energetic right and uh, again the ion energy right uh, to reach the power electrode uh, depends on your plasma potential and now it is vdc right instead of vc so in uh, in dc glow discharge it was vc so that is your dc power that you supply here in this case the ion energy reaching the power electrode depends on your self bias voltage right and uh, the ion energy uh, uh, ion energy reaching the wall right on the other side so the ions can also reach the other side um, and that energy only depends on uh, the plasma potential alone okay so the ion bombardment or the plasma uh, sustenance is uh, primarily handled with uh, electrons as i mentioned so electrons will reach the electrodes and also the chamber walls right it's not just the electrodes what i mean by chamber wall is we are just looking at two electrodes right but um, the it will be enclosed in in a in a uh, in a in a chamber and that chamber will also be grounded right so the electrons would can also scatter and reach there as well right so uh, electrons will be repelled uh, uh, from uh, let's say in this case um, from the cathode right and that would uh, generate uh, some sort of repulsion here and then uh, the ions are going to be attracted there right and normally the ions are accelerated through this potential drop right towards the electrode and uh, the reason for that is you know the accumulation of charges there in this uh, positive potential and then you are uh, going down to zero right and this part you can see this in the image as well so here what you see is a, a grounded electrode and then this electrode is connected to uh, uh, your um, uh, uh, a DC supply very large DC supply you can see a bright line here right and then you will see a dark spot so there is a dark region here right and then from here on it becomes bright so this is where your transition happens right the potential transition where you have lot of collision and so on so this color uh, is from excitation right we saw in the uh, first lecture that the generation of uh, emission right is from excitation process and that is the uh, the, uh, the excitation is pretty large that means that you have larger collision very close to the substrate and also in the uh, plasma as well with between these they are uh, very minimal uh, collision because of uh, reduction in the acceleration let's look at uh, the rf uh, 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 feed again but now we are going to look at the time dependency of this voltage right so when you take a rf right so this is the rf feed that you have and also let's look at the uh, potential across the two electrodes right so let's say this is the ground electrode and here i am feeding an rf with a, a blocking capacitor of course right and uh, here uh, we are going to swing between uh, uh, positive negative and then um, you know zero right it, it is going to go through zero as well so when uh, rf is positive right so this is positive your plasma potential and your electro potential electrode potential um, are identical so in this case the electrons will be attracted to the 
uh, surface and they will be accumulated on the surface. So now when I am going to go to the negative cycle, it is a complete change of polarity. Uh, now it becomes a positive, a negative and it will be rippled. All the electrons here are going to be rippled. And this repulsion is the one that gives acceleration and the energy to the electrons to go into the plasma and then create collision. But then the, the solid curve here, the black solid curve here shows the, uh, the time average that we see here, right? But in reality, you will uh, swing between positive and negative and what you see here is the uh, DC bias um, or uh, self bias that you see here uh, coming from the blocking capacitor and then you see uh, how the potential is uh, stabilized um, inside the plasma. And that brings us to end of uh, understanding the, the plasma characteristics and in the next session we will look at what are all the tools that we can use to exploit uh, the plasma here for uh, various purposes.